Well, the years of keeping my eye on Kijiji finally paid off, and I found myself a nice little uh, electric kiln to play with. Uh, the old fella I bought it from was uh, selling off all his toys and his house too. I guess he was uh, his wife passed away in the last year, and he's moving on to a different phase in his life, I guess. Um, so he uh, he was willing to let all this stuff go, which he built himself for uh, a pretty good price that I was happy to pay. Uh, he told me he did some ceramics and some some casting. Uh, Came with 52 of these little crucibles. I can't remember what these kind of crucibles are called. But, uh, seem they're at least good enough to, uh, cast, cast aluminum ingots in. I got 23 of these guys. Came in 23 of those little crucibles. He said it's all, uh, automotive transmission castings that he, uh, is automatic. He said he always, uh, goes for automatic transmission scrap because the castings are more detailed and he figures it's gonna be better stuff to cast with. Makes sense to me. Big, looks to me like a clay graphite crucible. He called it a graphite crucible. He was, uh, francophone, so, I don't know. Part of it may have just been a translation error. I don't know if it's a number six or number nine. It's a nice, nice medium size, smallish, smaller than my number twelve. But uh, bigger than these little guys. It's a little plug for the peephole. It's, it's actually broken. I have to carve a new one out of this giant box of fire bricks. That also came with it. Uh, there's several full bricks down there and a bunch of half bricks. I think I might use this one to set my crucible down on when I'm getting it into its pouring shank. Uh, a few good ones here. Some nice little homemade tongs. You, you squeeze it and it opens a bit. Squeeze down in here and the spring pushes it closed again. This spring, I think, is just to push the lever to open it. Doesn't open much, but it's enough. I feel okay about. Oh, sorry. I feel okay about even pouring from that. Open it up again. This little uh, little pouring ring is kind of egg shaped, and they don't they don't fit so well in it. But I guess it could be bent to, into shape. Uh, runs on good old 110 or 120, whatever you call it. You can plug it in, but uh, resistance wire goes in there. Around. It's about yay tall. Get, uh, get one of those in there if I want, but not this guy. He said it'll go up to uh, maybe 1800 Fahrenheit, so <laughs> definitely good for investment mold burnouts or firing ceramic shell if I ever get into that. Uh, which now I've got no excuse not to, I guess. No promises. Uh, right now, it's just on and off. But uh, I suppose that could be a project. Would be uh, drilling a little hole to stick a thermal couple in and figuring out how to get a temperature reading and maybe be able to program it. I have no idea how all that stuff works, so. Like I said, that could be a project. Um, 
it did come with some of these ceramic cones, which I guess you put them inside where you can see them through the peephole from the glow of the coils. You stand them up in there and then you watch it when the top melts and bends over. You know it's reached cone to a three or an eight. Kind of looks like an eight. Um, yeah. That seems crazy to me. I want some kind of thing that has a lit up number in degrees on it, but I'll have to figure out how to make that happen. He threw in these high temperature gloves. They're old and a little beat up and just definitely don't ask me what they're made of because I won't tell you. It should be good quality items. And this beat old uh, apron of his, he, which he clearly had to, Look at those fibers fly. It's gotta be a good thing, right? Anyway, beautiful old apron. Snaps are all corroded, but once upon a time it must have been a nice one. And he obviously did a lot of work in it. I think he was glad to see it go to someone who would put it to use. But probably not the apron. <laughs>